So let me summarize uh, what we learned so far. Okay. We learned how to create objects. Using XML approach and annotations both using IOC how to create objects so here we learned two ways with XML and with annotations And second thing we learned using IOC how to connect it, how to connect objects and other parameters also we can inject that we learned from XML and with annotations only one annotation we have seen so far to connect objects out of where we have used here to create object we have seen lot of stereotypes to connect objects in other words dependency injection to perform dependency injection we have used only one annotation fine the remaining annotations also we can see just one minute please And we learned specific to database, we learned connection pool creation. Connection pool creation and the advantages with connection pool. Without connection pool, when we create CRUD operations, we learned the problems also. What is the problem without connection pool? It may not provide parallelly when people try to execute lot of statements it cannot able to serve many people many users at a time so when we have so many concurrent users requesting application for CRUD operations we should have connection pool so that without failing CRUD operations even it can hold users time in the queue also and it can able to execute them successfully so using this connection pool we have seen playing jdbc so far now we are going to see this module okay so we have spring jdbc module on top of jdbc api this module is designed okay so how you can understand it for doing CRUD operations only this module has been given spring the JDBC given for database CRUD operations only so you can do CRUD operations the purpose of the use of this module is CRUD operations only DB operations create retrieve update delete insert anything you can do on database from Java code this API designed on top of JDBC only it is designed on JDBC only. So internally spring JDBC uses plain JDBC on top of your JDBC API only it has been designed and given to us so in plain JDBC we write a lot of code to do CRUD operation what we do in plain JDBC we create connection first first load driver 
using class dot for name we load a driver then we get connection driver manager dot get connection just by giving url username password then after getting connections we used to create statement we used to create statement either statement object or prepared statement or callable statement callable statement there are multiple statement options we have so depends on the requirement we used to create a statement object and we used to run queries using the statements finally we execute query using statement execute queries using statement or prepared statement or callable statement we have a lot of methods like execute update execute so depending on the use case if it is a insert update delete execute update if it is a insert execute a lot of such methods we have once we execute queries we used to close resources we used to close resources like close connection or close statement close result sets result set then close connection all the stuff we will do <clears throat> in many steps first we have to load a driver in plain jdbc we load driver we get connection we create statement we execute queries and we close all the resources this many lines you have to write on top of this code using the same logic inside jdbc is designed so spring jdbc will utilize a similar code only on top of this they given some methods in spring jdbc they provided some methods to perform the jdbc operations which methods spring jdbc api is having one method execute update so if i open jdbc template class there are two classes given for this purpose you can check api jdbc template this is the api document so for crud operations so there are many methods here you can see update is one method update issues a single sql update operation such as insert update or delete so for inserts or updates or deletes they given simple update method not execute update the name is simple update method and they are mentioning it for insert update delete any operation you can do insert update delete using this update method lot of update overloaded methods we have for different use cases <coughs> for select methods we have query methods query for object or query for list 
or query for map there are a lot of query for methods for select operations these are for insert update delete if you want to select a data query for something xyz query for int query for object or query for list whichever you mention so here you can write select query so that the select expected result it will return to you while using these methods while using these methods let's say if you want to insert you need to place insert query in this update method you need to pass your insert query or update query or delete query or while using the select method you need to for select operations query for methods and you need to write select query here and what about the remaining logic loading driver getting connection creating statement executing query closing resources earlier when it was java i was writing first one line second third four five six seven okay lot of lines of code i have written so in spring jdbc they wrapped all this logic inside this methods still they are using but under this methods and connection also they are using not using plain connection they are not using this plain connection logic instead the spring jdbc will give you connections via connection pool so connection pool also we should assign to jdbc api there is set data source method set data source so using this setter method this is predefined api in this api we have set data source so there we can pass our connection pool objects so we just supply connection pool as a input to jdbc api spring jdbc api so once you pass connection pool if you use the jdbc api update methods or query for methods using single line it will complete all these operations it will like create your statement it will execute your query and properly it will close your resources also while using plain jdbc you should always ensure that properly you have closed connections or not properly you created them or not you should ensure that okay check on session on my security unna jodo column bil bolte yeah <coughs> so you have to write lot of code so on top of this they implemented this methods a wrapper methods and given to you to make jdbc operation simple as a developer you need not to write this many lines every time for any requirement either you are inserting into employee table or student table or any xyz table similar logic only you are going to write so only your query and data will change so why you should write the similar logic a redundant logic every time to reduce that duplicate code or redundant code of jdbc they have given this jdbc api they are ensuring with this api no duplicate logics no duplicate logic and moreover need not to worry about resources closing easy to easy to manage resources whatever resources you have connections or statements you need not to close them it will manage it will close them so if you don't properly close connections in jdbc what will happen if i forget to close connection after doing jdbc operation your connection properly will not return to database 
so still it will believe that user using connection i need to open the socket so for other users it will not give you give your connection whichever you utilized maybe after restart or a shutdown it will realize that okay all connections are closed let me reuse it until then this connections or resources not properly closed so you should ensure that all the resources are properly closed or properly managed so as a developer you should ensure that always or during reviews you should see your team properly closed all the resources or not but if it is a spring jdbc i need not to worry about it the logic which api given will take care of all the steps so i need not to worry about resources issues also whatever connections it will use that is a great help looking like a small stuff they implemented but that's a great help it is avoiding to create a lot of lines of code and as well as more importantly your resources also properly managed so for that purpose they given in jdbc api two classes jdbc template class jdbc template and named parameter jdbc template two classes jdbc template and named parameter jdbc template using these two classes easily we can perform crud operations like jdbc simplified using these two classes they simplified it either you can go with jdbc template option or named parameter jdbc template option you choose first one or second one so how to utilize them during your mvc i have view here have you here from this view to read data i'll be having controller in the back end so using controller i can read data and i can send this data to my business or service class and from here i can send it to do class view to controller controller to service service to do in this do when i want to perform crud operations on so and so database table i have some student table there i want to do insert operation here in this jd dao instead of using plain jdbc you can use jdbc template so jdbc template will be your dependency here either jdbc template or named parameter jdbc template either one of it should be auto wire auto wired jdbc template or named parameter jdbc template so if you want to auto wire here this object should be created somewhere where we create any integration objects this template objects i need to create so to create this template object you know where to do you will be having at the rate configuration class at the rate configuration class under that configuration class you can create at the rate of bean method under this at the rate bean method you can create jdbc template or named parameter jdbc template 
create templates which our template you want <coughs> you should create jdbc template or named parameter jdbc template here using at the rate b you can create it finally return which our template it is so then this template object will be available for you to auto wire here so once you get it it's easy to execute CRUD operations and you know from here what you should do you will be auto wiring DAO here and you will be auto wiring service here so which our data you are getting from front end from controller you will send it to service from service to DAO DAO will use JDBC template or named parameter JDBC template and it will execute CRUD operations on your desired tables and importantly this templates needs a connection pool object so you need to provide a connection pool also here for connection pool you can create one more at the rate bean there you can create connection pool or else you can directly write that connection pool logic here also connection pool is an important input for this jdbc template because while executing this template operations it needs connections so from where this jdbc template will get connections from connection pool only so while creating this jdbc template or a named parameter jdbc template you should create connection pool object first you know connection pool what contains let me name it data source So this data source holds all your connections and we will be setting this data source as an input to this named parameter template or JDBC template using set data source method using setter method into this JDBC template or named parameter template we set it. So using set data source when we set the data source object here that will be available for their implemented methods already they have implemented a lot of update methods query for methods all that methods internally will utilize this data source means your connection connections from connection pool so now wherever you inject this jdbc template means in your DAO your DAO class into your DAO class you will be setting this JDBC template so using this JDBC template reference your methods like save or update or delete which are methods you have those methods will call just this JDBC template methods which are methods they have as part of their API update or query for methods jdbc template dot update if you call with your query plus data it will take this data and query to their implementation already they implemented right so this query and data will go and execute this method this is predefined implementation it will execute this method and this method will borrow connection from here it will get connection from here and it will execute queries on your database so you need not to write much logic here this method will take your query plus data and it will write already predefined jdbc code they will have here that jdbc code will execute queries on your table basically this update method have all the implementation apart from your query and the data 
So always you need to supply your query and data to these predefined methods or else query. If it is a select operation, you need to give query. If it is an insert or update delete with inputs, you can pass query plus data also. So that internally it will execute all your database operations on top of data, uh, database easily. Easy. You need to create data source, set it into predefined class and use that predefined class in your API. That's it. If I show you the studies example, right? I have created connection pool here in DB config. Create a data source. Here I created connection pool and using it. Now what I am saying, instead of this connection pool, by using this connection pool, I am writing my own database logic here, save method, plot of code, getting connection, creating statement, executing statement, iterating over result set, again execute update, see, lot of lines I have written, right? So the same code if I write using JDBC template, if you want to write using JDBC template, Let's create JDBC template object also here. Let the rate be JDBC template. Create JDBC template. JDBC template the JD equal to new JDBC template. JDBC template dot set data source. Data source is important to this one. So this data source object, I can I can call this method and I can get this object. Not only auto wiring, you can call this method also. You can call directly this method also, which means when you call this method, whatever return value you are returning, that value will come here. Imagine I mentioned at the rate auto bin. Without at the rate bin, if I mentioned here, every time while executing this create JDBC template, it will execute this method and it will get data source here. How many times this create JDBC template will execute as I have at the rate bean method here only one time. Still fine. But intentionally if somebody call this method again and again many connection pools it will create. Will your database provide that many connection pools? No. As I have maximum 20 connections first time when it executes only it will create. Again and again, 100 times if I execute this method, this method will fail. So this method need to execute only one time. So to make sure, you need to put at the rate B. So what will happen, though already your container executed this method and created a connection pool, when I call it one more time, it will not execute these lines. Already container is executed, container will say, hold on, you want this method return value only, right? I will give it to you already I executed let me let me give that return value to you so whatever data source you have here that data source it will supply okay so finally my JDBC template is ready return JDBC template that's it now JDBC template also ready here what I should do here write your DO class I'm writing one more DO class one more DO class with the JDBC template, DAO with the JDBC template I am creating. Previously I have simple DAO, now I want to use JDBC template. You can auto wire JDBC template here, which is already created. JDBC template. Now using this JDBC template, change this CRUD operation. I want to select ID, select operation first. You need not to do all these lines. So I need not to get connection. I need not to create any statement. I can do this. JDBC template dot <coughs> query for int. I am expecting one ID. So for that I am using query for int. Select max of ID from RBU expert table. What it will do? It will give you that ID directly. But earlier, how much logic we written? Get connection, create statement, then result set, then initializing one ID, then if condition. Let me remove all this. 
I need not to have all that statements. Just query for int method. I'm getting maximum ID as an integer. If it is a long value, you may put query for long, but query for int is fine. Now I want to insert a data. So to insert a data, you can use JDBC template to dot update method. Just update. So same query, whatever query you have here, pass same query here. And remove this. I need not to create statement and execute statement and need not to close connections. Remove all this stuff. Just two lines. In two lines, I was able to execute my select query and insert query. Logic has been simplified. That's it. And do I need to have this try catches also? I don't think we need. No compile time exceptions. All the exceptions are handling inside API. See, in two lines, I was able to finish my code. What was the story before the JDBC template? get connection, create statement, execute statement, get result set, get data from result set, execute update, close. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, almost 12 lines of code I was writing. And I should be confident enough to write this code. Properly I should write this code. But the simplified telling use query for int if you are selecting ID, any aggregation operation, count, count of uh, number of rows, minimum ID, maximum ID, or average salary, all such aggregations, whichever, you know, return value is integer, use query for method and put your required query here. So here, what queries you can put any, any queries like max, min, average, count, any such aggregation methods. Or select a salary from this table where so and so employee ID. Again, the expectation is integer on use query for int. And for doing any insert operations or update delete operations, simple update method. See, I'm writing my query with the data. Bus, I'm done. Now use this JDBC template based to DAO and try to execute your CRUD operations. In my service class, I'll comment this DAO. Instead of that, I will use this new DAO. JDBC template based to DAO. And run this. Test it. started let's test it i'll share you link ng rock http 9090 Slash SMS. Let's test it and see will it work or not. So I shared link with you. 
please pass some data we will see yesterday only four records i have okay oh hold on i got we know data and it failed duplicate key hmm wait asu and others wait okay so let me i am shutting shutting down okay one thing we forget here we got the maximum id 4 so the max id in the table is 4 it is giving 4 again we are trying to inserting 4 only here okay let's do this once you get it do increment that's it as it is a primary key right it is failing Again, I'm trying to inserting four. It is saying primary key violation. You see exception here. Unique constraint issue. ID is this ID four when you try to insert, it is violating unique key constraint. Same four again you are trying to inserting, which is already assigned to silation. Right? So now we resolve that. Okay. Now you can trigger. Go back to the same page and submit it. Yeah. Right. Why? Again. Unique constraint. Shavani, Silesh, we know that you tried insert. I didn't get it. So I see one, two, three insert success. One, two, you guys tried and failed, but this is the previous data. Success for everyone. I see only three inserts extra one, two, three. What about others? You tried and failed or did you get exceptions? Why I'm getting this problem? Okay, unique constraint violated for four. RBU expert table for Vinod when it try for five, it failed. Do you guys understand what is the problem here? For few, it is failing. Passo success, Bindu. Passo success, ID is 9. But in database, Okay. If it is working fine, it's okay. But why I'm seeing that errors? On your first trial, is it failed or something? Concurrently, you all tried, right? I'm expecting something same. Same ID to not generate. Maybe there is a chance also before inserting. You four people tried first to max ID select operation it has done parallelly. This operation executed. 
so max id navin vinod shravani and mayank all you silesh tried at a time and max id 5 it returned to me as well as to you and everyone and max id 5 incremented plus plus it became 6 using same 6 id it is trying to inserting all our records there i think it is uh, failing can you can you retry again i'll say okay then will you able to insert Okay, try at a time if all ready and say okay. <coughs> then insert. I'll tell you the real time problem also you can see here. Okay. Don't insert now. When I say one, two, three, then you can start. Okay. Everyone. So we will see. Yeah, first trial is failed. Yeah, I can see that. Wait, guys, don't insert. I did shut down. Okay. Let me restart and when I say yes, one, two, three, start, then insert, okay? okay then wait. So we'll see. On at a time load, is the scenario working fine or not? Okay. If you guys ready, okay? One, two, three, start. Yeah, so unique constraint violation error. So front end, what error you are getting? See, unique constraint 13 is failing. As per our logic, it should not fail. But why it is failing? I'll explain. At a time, you all triggered, right? This code. <clears throat> when you when you trigger at a time. You all people called this save method. Okay, your request came till line number 17. Okay, so at a time, at a time till line number 17 it came and it is about to execute. So though in microseconds difference, your insert query is about to execute but not yet executed and committed. This insert is not yet executed and committed. So on database, I am applying the select max ID. So I'm asking database, what is the maximum ID till now you have? So earlier it has 9 or 10, that ID it will return to everyone, for everyone. Imagine a use case. For everyone, maximum ID 10 it is giving, 10 become 11. That 11 is trying to insert for everyone here. So the same situation is happened for 13. Here if I see issues, so to whom this conflict is happened, I got exception for one, two, three, four. A lot of exceptions, I guess. Yeah, let's see the key. Which for which key it is giving error and to whom? For 13 key, Silesh when Shail insert 13. For Vinod also it picked up 13 how? Because after 12th record, before 13th insertion, Silesh and Vinod hit application at the same time, even Bindu, even Manman, Rohit, Mayank. See, for how many it is given ID same 13? But out of which, Firstly, whoever selected, right, his record might be inserted. Already 30th primary key is utilized by was. So his record is first inserted before your insertions. That's why <coughs> properly it given ID. There is no mistake in the code. But before your insertion, others insertion happened with same ID. 
right so to execute this update it is taking little bit of time meanwhile so many parallel requests i got here so same id generated for me so that's why in real time we used to say don't use this kind of max incrementation instead we use sequences sequence will not do any mistake if it generated one sequence for me same id it will not give to anybody else here the problem is already existing 12 records and when you ask which is the next record 13 it is suggesting to everyone no mistake in the code but if this insertion is happened parallelly like as was requested first his record should be inserted the next person until this insert operation completed if your call is not coming here then it's okay but many people calling the save method at a time it triggered and at a time it given ids to them and during insertion it is failing okay to resolve this problem primary key violation issues when many execute at a time so we will give solution also another method i will use save with the max id i used right now i will use okay let me shut down for a while now i'll create one more method Save with the <coughs> sequence. I'll use sequence approach here instead of this. I can use sequence also. Okay, so let me create a sequence. Oracle sequence. Okay. simple sequence let me ask chat gpt Simple sequence. Hold on. Create sequence. Sequence name start with and increment by. Where you should create it inside database. So in database you need to create a sequence. Create sequence. Put any name. RPU. So you can something I'm naming it. Start with one, increment by one. So first ID it will start with one. From next onwards it will increment plus one. Okay, I'm creating it. So sequence is created. I can use this sequence in my code. How to use? So this is how select your sequence name dot next value from dual. So this one as a query you need to give select rbu underscore sequence dot next value from dual. That's it. It will give you ID. Which ID? We are saying start with one. Okay. First it will give one. To insert that ID one here. Next time, if somebody request here one, it will not give to them. It will give two. If one more user request three, though it is not executed insert yet, unique IDs, unique tokens, it will give it to you. This is like a token. When you enter, you know, somewhere where huge rush, they will generate a token for you. Like if you go to the bank, they will give you token number one, two, 
three, four hundred, two hundred. So once your token number called, you will go and do your bank operations similarly. So a token will be generated to you that is unique. So this token generator will generate a unique token. So at a time now 100 users also request. It will not show rush and give the same ID. We know the request at first. Let me give ID 1. At the same time, if somebody requested also, it will not show any hurry. Wait, we know this requested. I'm giving ID 1 to him. And I'll give ID 2 for you. 3 for somebody else. Like that, it will execute. Now, let me truncate this table data and ask you for insert. Let us delete the complete data from this table. Truncate table. RBU experts. See what will happen. Table data is truncated. I don't know, machine running little slow. Just bear with me. So, no data. Now, try use this method. In your DM. Not in DMO. From your service. We called a simple save, right? Instead of simple save, I will use save with the sequence method. Save with sequence from my JDBC template. Now run the same code. Just a minute, guys. Okay. So now see the solution resolves that problem. Max ID problem it resolves. When I say start, okay, please all submit it. Okay, if you're all ready, one, two, three, start. So this time I'm not expecting any issues. So tell me if at least one issue if you see. I don't see any exception. Though 1 million request comes to my application also, it will not show any issues to them. See, see the magic. During insertion, one month record inserted first. But ID 1 is generated for silage. So that's why it is allocated for silage. His insert, his insertion took some time. But it didn't confuse while generating his ID. See, properly it given his ID and at a time other user also came. For him, Pavan, it given new ID. For Bindu, another ID. For Vasu, next ID. And insertion happened at the end of the day for everyone. If the same thing if I use with max ID, definitely it will fail. Because ID it is giving one to everyone at a time when they try to insert on table, first user will insert, the next user's records will fail, saying primary key is violated. But sequence will not do that. Sequence will generate one token for each one, a fresh token. If already token is consumed by someone, the same token will not be issued to others. Today bank started at 9 a.m. So when at a time 10 people come to the bank. So though they are showing rush also, my token machine will generate token numbers one by one only. 
I'll generate a token one and I'll give it to person one. Token number two, the person two, and three, four, five. Like that, token machine will generate tokens and give it to them. Now, when their operation will be executed, it depends on their query. So, Silas operation may execute first, or Manmad operation may execute first. It's okay. It will execute them maybe in microseconds difference, but there is no worry, right? Nothing to worry. Though it insert as a sixth record or seventh record, I'm not worrying about it. End of the day, they inserted or not. In case if you want to see them in an order during selection, maybe order by you need to apply. Order by ID. Plus, we will see them in an order. I don't have any worries with the order. Properly it given IDs or not is matter. Properly it is inserted or not is matter. Okay. So we understand the problem. Alone if I execute in my machine, if I test, definitely I may not see issues. But as we all testing it, right? We made machine as a server and testing it. Definitely we can observe such problems. We can see solutions also. This is the right one, okay? Right solution using sequence, even in JPA also or Hibernate also. We use the sequences, we use max ID, but definitely there is a problem. We will see that to resolve that, don't apply any. Threads logic here. Don't make your methods synchronized and execute one by one. That will, you know, uh, create a lot of performance issues. Don't put any threads logic here to make it safe by putting max ID. That is not good. Instead, use the sequence kind of logic here. That's it. And nowhere else your code will fail. In controller or service side, it will never fail. Only if there is a chance that to fail you during this database operations only. Okay. Yeah. I hope uh, you understand the basic difference of JDBC template and normal JDBC. Okay. Tomorrow we will see. Okay. All the methods of template and named parameter template.